A new deal for Australia to supply guided missiles to the United States is expected to be the centrepiece announcement from the Australian-US ministerial consultations in Brisbane. We're joined by Brisbane Bureau Chief Adam Walters from the setting of today's talks at Queensland Government House. Adam, good morning. The Defence Minister is really talking up the economic benefits of a new weapons agreement. Yes, Janie, more than a military focus, I guess you'd have to say, as leaders meet here at Queensland's Government House this morning. Uh, Mr Miles says that the deal to sell missiles to the Americans will be important for the industrial bases of both countries. The announcement is expected to be made as discussions continue over the growing influence of China in the region and the extent to which the United States wants to define that expansion from the PRC as aggressive, as coercive, as bullying. Now it's interesting to note though that the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Defence Minister Miles have been very careful with their language in referring to China, not buying into that American rhetoric. Yesterday, for example, the Prime Minister used the words strategic competition when referring to China while welcoming the Defence Secretary Austin and the Secretary of State Antony Blinken at a lunch in Brisbane. The relationship between Australia and the United States has never been stronger. It comes at a time of strategic competition in our region. But Australia and the United States are working together to promote security, stability and prosperity in our region. Johnny, China, after all, is Australia's biggest trading partner and the Albanese government, despite the historic uh, and sentimental ties with the United States, will be weighing up the strategic interests of Washington with the 21st century reality of a two-way trade agreement with China worth $220 billion. 90% of Australia's merchandise imports uh, from China. In March, Australia's exports to China hit the highest level for a monthly amount since records began in 1988 when shipments exceeded $19 billion. In the four years since the last Osmin talks here, there have been no less than 24 meetings between Australian ministers and their Chinese counterparts in upholding the spirit of that new diplomatic architecture formed in 2013 to advance negotiations surrounding the free trade agreement. Now, according to the Department of Foreign Affairs, investment from China is also crucial to the health of the bilateral relationship. Now, even though US Vice President Kamala Harris last year told the Pacific Islands Forum that the region had not received the, di the diplomatic attention and support that it deserved, the US will nonetheless have an expectation of strong support from Australia in its condemnation of China's influence on the Solomon Islands and the extent to which the Chinese have invested there. That'll be tricky for Anthony Albanese. He knows the Chinese have invested in Australia to the tune of 46 billion dollars. Now that's about a quarter of what the Americans are injecting so perhaps that's where there's an expectation the Americans will be receiving a pretty good bang for their buck in this deal over the missiles. Janie. Adam Walters, appreciate the update live in Brisbane.